Nikola is making progress in terms of sales of its hydrogen trucks, but diesel engines might be around for longer than expected. Let's see why. At CES 2024, during a press conference, Bosch America CEO Mike Mansueti presented a vision in which hydrogen is one of the key elements to decarbonizing the energy supply. As a result, Bosch is investing heavily in hydrogen solutions along the entire hydrogen value chain. A major part of Bosch's efforts is the hydrogen fuel cell powertrain, which they believe is the path to electrification for heavier vehicles. Yeah. This is the reason for the strategic partnership with Nikola, one of the very few companies, if not the only one, that makes Class 8 hydrogen trucks, and which we featured in several videos on this channel. But Bosch also plans to supply the hydrogen powertrain system and other components to other trucks makers in the US, in Europe and in China. During the same press conference, the Bosch executive invited the audience to test the Nikola truck. You can find all the details in the video we took during CES at the link above. Focus on fuel cell powertrains and the partnership with Nikola does not mean that Bosch is excluding other options to reduce CO2 emissions in road transport. A few months after CES, Bosch was again in Las Vegas, this time for the ACT Expo, an event that in the last few years has become a must-go event to learn about trends and new products in clean energy for the trucking industry. Just like a CES, Nikola had its own space, but this time, Bosch's focus was not on Nikola and not on providing fuel cells for new heavy-duty trucks. Instead, the focus was on how to accelerate the transition to zero emissions for existing diesel trucks. The solutions presented were e-fuels and renewable fuels. E-fuels are synthetic fuels produced using renewable energy sources. We use these slides presented by Bosch at ACT Expo and other events to describe the approach. The process starts with water electrolysis to produce hydrogen. The hydrogen is then combined with captured CO2 to create various synthetic fuels, such as methanol, gasoline, kerosene, diesel and ammonia. Products like synthetic methanol, for example, can be converted into low-carbon gasoline, while others can be converted into cleaner fuels for the aviation and maritime industries. According to Bosch, early laboratory tests on a four-cylinder engine powered by e-fuels show positive results, as they can perform just as well as a diesel engine, while significantly reducing CO2 emissions. This slide presented by Bosch and shared by other market players shows that from 2024 onwards, PEV and hybrid vehicles are gaining share, but by 2030, the majority of vehicles on the road will still be powered by diesel. Therefore, the only solution to achieve the low emission goals is to address all the existing vehicles on the road. As for heavy-duty trucks, the applications vary so widely in terms of load, power, range and terrain that it is necessary to include e-fuels to address this diverse array of technologies. E-fuels, however, still represent a transition to a scenario that will be completely powered by renewable energy. Bosch has been forging partnerships to develop demo plants for e-fuels, and by 2025, the first demo plant will be operational in Bilbao, Spain, producing 30 barrels per day. As companies will be obligated to document their carbon footprint, Bosch is also providing a digital platform to monitor and report the use of renewable fuels throughout the fuel delivery chain. The goal is to ensure transparency and accuracy in tracking CO2 reductions. Even the futuristic city of Neom is stepping into the field. Also during ACT Expo, Saudi Aramco and Inova 
Neom's Energy and Water subsidiary signed a joint development agreement to construct and establish a synthetic electrofuel plant to demonstrate the technical feasibility and commercial viability of e-fuels. Now it is important to remember that e-fuels are not a recent innovation, but they go back to the 1920s, when German scientists Franz Fischer and Hans Tropst invented a method that mixes carbon monoxide with hydrogen to create synthetic petroleum. Not surprisingly, the method became known as the fischer tropsch synthesis. Then, in the 1930s, German chemist Friedrich Burgess developed a process to convert coal to liquid hydrocarbons, and because of this innovation he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. During the 70s, scientists at Mobil, the company now known as ExxonMobil, developed a process to convert methanol to gasoline, which is used to blend synthetic fuel with unleaded gasoline. Recently, e-fuels received interest due to the advancements in renewable energy sources and carbon capture technology. The production of e-fuels is therefore potentially more friendly to the environment and available at a lower cost. Most of the interest on e-fuels, however, comes from Europe, not surprisingly, as gas prices are higher over there. Besides Bosch, also Volkswagen, Ferrari and other automakers are considering or investing in e-fuels to complement their electric vehicle strategies. The push for e-fuels in Europe is also due to political reasons. The European Commission was working on a plan to fight climate change, which included a ban to new combustion engine vehicles from 2035. Automakers from Germany, Italy and Poland, which are the countries where most vehicles are produced in Europe, firmly oppose this deadline and are pushing e-fuels as a way to keep current vehicles on the road while also preserving jobs in the factories. More than 150 companies are also part of the EFU Alliance, an industry group whose goal is to advancing and intensifying the production of synthetic carbon neutral fuels. This is not the only alliance that wants to maintain diesel engines on the road while promoting e-fuels. Recently, Toyota, Mazda and Subaru each committed to developing new and more compact engines that are compatible with petrol, diesel, but also with new alternatives such as e-fuels, biofuels and liquid hydrogen. The message from Bosch, European and Japanese automakers is very simple. Full electric vehicles will take longer than expected, and diesel engines are staying longer than expected too. On this topic, we invite you to watch the video about BYD, who also has a vision of the future about electric vehicles.